Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to the problem number one from the Top Coder SRM 742 contest entitled Birthday Candy. The problem states Eliza is a primary school student. Tomorrow is her birthday. In Eliza's country, it is customary that when it's your birthday, you are supposed to bring candy for everyone. Hence, Eliza's mother is now taking Eliza to buy a bag of candy for tomorrow. Social protocol dictates that candy is always given out to classmates using the following algorithm. Repeat the following. If there is still enough candy for everyone, including you, give everyone else one candy and take one candy for yourself. Else, stop and you get to keep the candy remaining in the bag. You know that there are K other kids in Eliza's class. The store carries different brands of candy. You are given their descriptions in the candy, which is a vector or an array. Each element of candy is the number of pieces of candy in one of the bags available at the store. Find out which bag should Eliza choose if she wants to maximize the candy for herself. Return the number of pieces of candy she will get to keep if she chooses the bags wisely. And the constraints for this problem are that there is going to be between 1 in 50 bags of candy, or 1 in 50 students, which will be K. Uh, there will also be between 1 in 50 elements in your vector candy, and each of the elements in the vector candy uh, will be between 1 and 1,000. So let's take a look at one of the examples that TopCoder provided us with. So here is the example. The input is uh, k equal to 9, and our vector candy has the elements 23 and 7. And the output for this problem, or this input, is going to be 7. And it provides the following explanation. It says, if Eliza buys the bag with 23 candies, the following happens. 23 is enough to give everyone a candy, so she gives everyone else a candy and takes one for herself. Because k is equal to 9, that means uh, 10 candies are distributed and one, she has one now. Uh, 13 is enough to give everyone a candy as well. So once again, she hands out 9, takes one for herself, and at this point she has 2. And 3 is no longer enough to give everyone a candy, so she keeps the remaining three candies. In total, she would have 1 plus 1 plus 3 equals 5 candies. On the other hand, if she buys the bag with 7 candies, she will get to keep all of them because it's not enough to give everyone in the class at least 1. So it's a pretty straightforward problem. Uh, obviously, it's problem 1 in the Division 2 Top Coder contest. Um, and, and visually, what this looks like is the following. So uh, we can see here that basically the gray uh, elements or squares or rectangles are the candies given out to other students, and the green ones are the candies that Eliza gets to keep. So uh, the gray is equal to k, the number of students, and if we include uh, Eliza herself, we get k plus 1. So we can calculate the number of candies that uh, Eliza receives after distributing them to everyone else as just uh, the total number of candies, which is either 23 or 7, divided by k plus 1, so using integer division. And that'll sort of erase whatever remainder there is, because when you are using integer division, it always rounds down. And then to get the remainder that Eliza also gets to keep, we can just use the modulus operation. Uh, so uh, the integer division, 23 divided by 10 will give us 2, and then 23 modulus 10 will give us 3. So 2 plus 3 will be equal to 5. And if we look at the other example, uh, we can see here that the integer division will just give us 0, and the modulus will give us 7. And so we just need to basically output uh, every single one of, uh, or calculate every single one of these values, and then take the maximum of them. So this is the formula that we're going to end up using. So for the ith candy, uh, plug it into this calculation. So integer division by k plus 1, and then modulus by k plus 1. Add those two together and take the maximum. So pretty straightforward. So let's take a look at our code solution. So we're starting off with our Java solution because it's the most straightforward and is probably similar, most similar to what most people would do. Uh, just declaring uh, an integer answer using uh, Java 8's enhanced for loop here, which is pretty clean, and then just plugging this into our formula and setting answer to be the maximum of our current answer and uh, the current element in our array C. And then once we've done this in our for loop, we can just return the answer. So pretty straightforward. Uh, for our C++ solution, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to use lambdas and algorithms. You could implement the exact same thing we just saw for Java using a range-based for loop. 
Um, but I want to show you something a bit different. So this is a bit messy. We have our lambda at the top here that we're uh, capturing k, which we need in our lambda body. And then we have uh, each element of our vector of integers. And then we pass this into the same formula that we saw earlier. And then uh, we're declaring another vector of integers v, which is going to be basically the transform values uh, after we uh, use this lambda on each of the elements in C. And so we can just uh, fill the values in V by using the transform algorithm, passing in sort of the uh, source for our transform, and then also passing in the target, which is the uh, iterator at the beginning of our vector V, and then passing in the lambda as well. And then once we do that, we can just call max element on our new vector V. So this is a bit messy. I wouldn't actually recommend coding this in uh, coding competition because there's a lot more characters. But uh, the main reason I wanted to do it was to highlight the different algorithms, transform uh, and max element, and how you can make use of lambdas. Um, and also, this is going to become a lot cleaner in uh, future versions. So TopCoder only has support for C++11 right now. Uh, but once we upgrade to C++20, or a newer version, hopefully at some point TopCoder Top coder will support C++20, uh, we can do the following. Um, so a lot cleaner here. Note that we've dropped the uh, explicit template type on our vector because C++20 has template uh, class type deduction, which is really nice. Also note that we don't need any of our begin and end on our uh, vectors here because we're going to have ranges and the uh, range version of our algorithms. And also note that uh, we don't need to explicitly declare uh, the type of our parameter passed into our lambda because this is a generic lambda. So all that stuff written out. Uh, here we're using C++20, uh, 202020, and then C++14 was when we got generic lambdas. But as I mentioned, TopCutter still only has C++11 support, so looking forward to in the future when they upgrade to a more modern version of C++. And hopefully, even beyond C++20, we'll be able to write some code that looks like this, which is the cleanest of everything. Uh, note that we've been able to drop the auto on our uh, parameter type here. Type inference won't require auto at some point. There's a, been a paper that's written. That might even be in C++20. I'm not exactly sure. And then hopefully in the future, this is more speculation uh, than it is actually something that's planned, but we might be able to write something like this. So having to declare a vector and then reserve on one line and then have to use the algorithm on another line is a little bit cumbersome. So being able to do something like this where the output is merely what you're assigning to would be super nice. Um, but that's just speculation. Anyways, moving on to our final solution, our Python solution. As usual, the most concise of all of these solutions here, we're using list comprehension and our max algorithm. So basically, uh, for each E, for each element in our uh, list of candies, we're just performing this. Note that we have the double backslash for integer division. That's what integer division is in uh, Python, and then just apply max to this. So all three of these solutions will work. Uh, the last thing to talk about is the time complexity of this problem, which for this problem is going to be linear in the length of the number of elements in our list or vector C, which is our candies. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.